Hey everyone, Andrew Shulman here, continuing the series for the Machine Mark II. Now at this point in time, we've done quite a few videos sort of on the basics of the machine, and at this point I want to move on to some more advanced features and some things that are a little bit more tricky to understand. Uh, so I figured I'd kick that off by talking about the sampler in machine. And um, let's go ahead and, and take a look here. I have a group with uh, some melodic samples. I'm just going to turn this on to fixed velocity so we can hear it better. And then bring the volume down. All right, so now we have everything, and I just want to go through the different uh, different parameters that I can change with the sampler, and actually talk about what the sampler is. Um, so I'm going to go to my sound tab here, and then over to the very beginning page just by hitting these arrows over here. And I can see right here in the screen it's saying sampler. That's going to be the first module in my effects chain. So what actually is this sampler? Well, it's machine's way of translating wave samples into something you can actually hear. There's a lot of different parameters we can mess with that change not only the sound of the sample, but also how machine interacts with that sample itself. So I'm just going to scroll through these different things and tell you what they do. So, so start on the first page here. First we have polyphony, and this is how many times the sample can play at once. So if I have set on one, it's just going to play the sample one time at a time. You can hear it basically cuts itself off. If I change this to something higher, I can have several of those playing at a time. Now if I turn this all the way down, I have this cool option called Legato. So I'm going to demonstrate this by going into keyboard mode. And then if I play, if I hold it down and, and sort of play in, the, in a Legato fashion here, and maybe I turn this glide up a little bit, I can get some really cool effects. I'm not sure how, how good this sounds in this particular sample, but if I had a synth lead or something like that, I'm very applicable. Anyways, I'll turn this back to one, and then uh, let's go on to the next one. Next we have pitch bend, and this is going to uh, to tell machine how far to change the pitch when you have an external pitch bend on, say, like a MIDI controller. That's going to tell you how much the pitch will change. Uh, we also have an engine over here, and you can change this from standard to some other ones over here, which will give it a, a little vintage feel. You can sort of hear that little noise in the background there. So you can select one of these if you, if you want to get that little sound to it. Uh, for me, I don't really like that extra sound, so I'll just turn it off. Um, we also have our next page here, just to scroll through with the arrows. We can go ahead and look at the pitch and gate options here. So first of all, we have tune. That's just going to be the actual tune of the sample. So and change it there. And all these you can do with the finer adjustments by holding down the shift button and turning the knob. That will give you the, those uh, more fine adjustments if you want to fine tune the sound. We also have a start option. And this is going to uh, determine the actual start point of the sample. So you can hear those nasty clicks that start to sound, uh, but what it's doing is changing the, the start point of the sample. So it's going to play the sample from a point um, further in than the actual start point is. So you can mess with that. Uh, next, we have reverse, pretty self explanatory. Now, here under type, this is going to be the type of the amplitude envelope. And I get this question so much, it's really important to understand what this does. So right now, on one shot, it's going to play the entire sample, even if I just hit the pad one time. Now, if I go ahead and change this over to, let's just play with this one here. This is going to change the way that the pad's going to affect the sample. So if I just play it once, you hear that's going to cut off. And then you can go ahead and change with any of these parameters in the other screen to get a different sound. And you also have... Uh, ADSR, that's going to be a, another different sounding, uh, another different sounding um, envelope, and you can again change any of these parameters. Uh, so some people ask if you can fade in the sound, just increase the attack, and you can get an effect like that. Um, so this is going to be something that uh, you'll use a lot, if, especially if you're sampling, because you want to uh, change those samples to one-shot mode. Um, anyways, let's go to the next page. We have some effects, some basic effects here, just one knob. You have compression, drive, um, sample rate, and bits. So you can play with any of these. I've never actually used these these two here, or even the drive. Um, I just find myself using uh, additional effects rather than these built-in ones. But uh, if you want to do some quick changes, you have the option there. Um, next, we have filters. So this is going to be a built-in filter here. So you have a low pass, band pass, high pass, and um, and just regular EQ. So you can mess with any of those, and each one has its own set of parameters that you can mess with over 
um, with these other three knobs. And I'm actually going to turn this on because it will uh, be fun to play with in some other uh, other options here. So I'll just turn on a low pass filter and bring the cutoff filter down a little bit. So next page we have our modulation envelope. And this is going to be uh, an envelope that we can sync to some different things. You can see here we have our destination. That's going to be um, what this envelope is actually modulating. And then here we have our attack, hold, and decay parameters. So let's play with these and see what it does. Um, first on the pitch one, we can obviously just change the pitch. So that's pretty fun to play with there. We have our cutoff option here. And this will work if you have the filter already enabled. So you can hear that it's it's uh, changing the filter frequency there. And you can turn these both ways. So, so see what the effects are depending on if the values are positive or negative. We also have a drive option here. And then pan, this is a cool effect. So lots of fun things to play with there. You can get some very creative sounds, and especially when you combine those with the next page and the LFO and the destination of the LFO. So we can turn this on and maybe change the destination to pitch. Get some really crazy sounds here. Um, and these are gonna be, I'm pretty sure these are the same. Yeah, you can, you can send the LFO to the same things as the modulation envelope, so. These are pretty self-explanatory in terms of what these actually do. Um, and make sure to also play with the, the type of the envelope, or the type of the LFO, the speed, the phase, and the sync. Um, the sync will let you lock it into the tempo of your sequencer. Um, the speed is obviously just going to change how fast it is. And the phase will determine the starting point of that, uh, of that LFO. So lots of things there. Um, this is fun to send this to different things and really get some creative sounds like I was talking about. And finally, on the last page, we have velocity destination and module destination. Um, so velocity destination is going to be where a machine sends the velocity information. So you can think about it as a, a sending the, the velocity to different effects of the sample. Um, so the cool way to see this is volume is automatically set to 100%. So what that is telling machine is that um, velocity is completely correlated to volume. So, oh, I forgot I had it on fixed velocity. Let's turn that off. You can turn this all the way down to zero to get a same effect as having fixed velocity. So this is telling machine to not correlate velocity and volume. It's just going to keep the volume of the sample as is originally. You can also set this to cutoff frequency. So the softer I play, the more cutoff the sound is. And again, uh, play with the positive negative values here to get some cool effects. And you can also set the velocity destination to the start point of the sample. So in this case, if you have it on a positive value, the harder you play, um, the further along the sample will actually start from. So that's interesting. And you can also set it to decay. Um, finally, we have mod wheel destination here. I don't have a keyboard controller with the mod wheel set up, um, but if you did, you can send the mod wheel to any of these other options over here. Again, pretty self-explanatory. Just play with those and get the effect that you want. So that covers it for all the different parameters in the sampler. Um, hopefully this video shows you the different sounds you can get without even adding any effects. This is all within the sampler, which is by default the first module in the effects chain. As always, if you have any questions, just leave them below and I'll be checking those once in a while. And if not, I will see you on the next part of the series. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.